Welcome to Field Sports Britain. We're in Sweden to look at things that go bang. We are in the land of the moose, of water and of bullets. We're at the Norma factory, which makes these. The Norma factory is in the town of Omordfors, which is halfway between Oslo and Stockholm. It's a well-oiled machine that employs 160 people, and from here, bullets fly all over the world. We'll be looking at their performance under lab conditions and in the field. Starting from the start, in the beginning, there was powder. Black powder. Let's start with basics. What makes bullets go bang? Right. History of gunpowder. Or history of, history of explosives, because that's, that's what you put in bullets these days, isn't it? No, not at all. Not? Not. Uh, explosives and gunpowder went out in 1888. Um, you started off the demonstration with old-fashioned gunpowder, which is a low explosive. When you put a match to it, it explodes. That's, and what, that's what we call black powder. Black powder, yes. Right. And it's lucky you still have your eyebrows. <laughs> we today use a propellant, um, the same category as petrol. If you slosh a little bit of petrol around, move it well clear. We should say, kids, don't try this at home, obviously. Yeah. You do know what you're doing. Well... To an extent. To an extent. It burns. It doesn't explode, there's no detonation, and you merely have a fire. And like you say, it's a propellant, it propels cars forward, and that presumably is what modern powders do with bullets, they propel them forward. Yes. And obviously, if they are ignited in a tight and confined space, like petrol in your car cylinder, it burns quite rapidly. Should we just try the black powder again, to see what it looks like? Because that was fun. Um, I know, it's not fun. No, not fun at all. We're not allowed to enjoy ourselves. Ah, yes. Um, spectacular, I think, is the word you're looking for. Very good. Ready, steady, hooray! <laughs> <laughs> and that is an explosive. Right. And you could feel the blast, not just the heat. Now, shall we try the same, but with a modern propellant? Yes. And I'd hope it would be as exciting, but you're going to tell me it's not going to be so <laughs> Set fire to your flies, man. Ah, yes, that was the slow <laughs> fuse eventually catching. Fast burning and slow burning propellants burn at about the same speed. Just to show you there's a difference out on our rock in the Swedish countryside, we have a race between the two powders with a little flash of old-fashioned gunpowder at the end to show which one is the winner. Go! Fast on the left, fast on the left, coming up, very close, the black powder, black powder's about to go on the left, it's fast powder, it's a fast powder, it's a slow powder, is a loser by a nose. Propellant is one important element of the cartridge, another is bullets, and we'll come on to those. The third is the cartridge case. I see, um, I see Norma's in the counterfeiting business. <laughs> this is where it all begins. Um, we start off with brass discs um, or tombak sheeting. And this hasn't changed for over 100 years. Same material. And we start off with a brass disc. And in this part of the factory, we produce a basic cup. How do you get from that to that? Basically, hit it with 30 ton hammer. Uh, if you hit it with a big enough force, everything complies. That's a very Swedish solution. Yeah, um, we've also got to heat it um, afterwards to get the metal to de-stress. But essentially, hit it in a big press. Okay, this is just the start. Let's yes. go have a look at the rest of the factory. Right. It's essential that the brass is the right quality. So Siv here is working hard at something. What's she doing? She's checking the case head structure of the cases. What, She's... every cartridge that goes out of here? No, every batch and throughout the production samples are taken just to check quality control. The structure of the case and the hardness changes along its length. So you can't just check it in one point, you've got to check it all along its length. And that's part of the normal quality is that it's consistent and we've got the hardness correct for what we believe is the optimum balance. So what does this mean to me, the shooter? It means that you know that this batch of normal cases is the same as the last batch that you used and will be the same as next year's batch. Is this why normal cases are so popular with reloaders? Yes, they're very, very <laughs> consistent. 
This poster shows how hard the various components have to be. From hard stuff to soft stuff, which is being mixed up in the next room. Ballistic gel is crucial for making sure the bullets are doing what they're supposed to. But more of that later. Norma doesn't always use the most modern technology, as this cartridge case testing machine shows. OK, this is our state-of-the-art 1914 equipment. Yeah, design then, a little bit updated with a modern feed and stuff, but it's still in use, still works. This is First World War technology? Yes, and it does the job. We've got a few new machines well, that do exactly the same job, but it measures everything, it checks the dimensions, and any rejects come out and you can see what the cause is, why it was rejected on the measurements, whether it was length or the no flash hole or whatever it was. So you've been doing this for a long time in normal. When did the factory start? 1902. Were you making ammunition for First World War? No, no. Um, it was always sporting ammunition and target. Um, we did produce some military and we, were, we developed the capacity in case. Sweden's been neutral in both wars. Um, so Norma, yeah, increased capacity in case, but never actually needed to. To ensure every bullet that leaves Sweden arrives with you in perfect condition, each case is meticulously checked and checked again. The next step in the bullet making process is in yet another part of the building, putting the primer or cap into the cartridge. Now the bullets, and at last we see all the components coming together. So this machine's going pretty fast, let's slow it down. This is the bit that keeps the bullet flying straight to the deer. This is the bit that breaks up inside the deer. This machine puts this bit inside this bit. And here's one I prepared earlier. There really is a rhythm to the manufacturing process here at Norma. As well as grease, sawdust and, surprisingly, extra virgin olive oil keep things moving along smoothly. It's finally the moment when all those stages come together. Time to encase all the ingredients into that fresh little box of possibilities that could end up being some of the most incredible memories of your life. Some of the most beautiful brass in the world. Now it goes up this conveyor belt, along here, down into the tub, out onto the roundy, roundy thing, technical term, that one, where exactly the right amount of powder goes into each cartridge. Now, follow me, round here, quick, 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 quick. Here are the 3006 rounds with the ballistic tips. They go into that hole there, out here, up the conveyor belt, along the top there, down where this nice lady is packing them into the brass cartridges. And then they come out here, they get packed with these black plastic things. Look, they break in two, very handy. They come over here, put into cardboard boxes, and they're ready for you, the shooter. These are soft point bullets, loved by fox shooters and deer stalkers alike. And Don Heath, as Norma's top field tester, knows it does what it says on that smart new box. Finally, it's time to get those large jellies, which we prepared earlier, and stick them out onto the range. We want to illustrate the difference between the two main styles of hunting rounds, plastic-tipped bullets and soft-point bullets. We start by shooting a 223 plastic-tipped bullet into our big jelly. It wobbles, but it doesn't fall down. We spin the mould around and approach from the other end. Now we're going to use the Norma Oryx 223, a soft point bullet. We now have two bullets to compare. The 223 soft point bullet has also penetrated the gel, but at what cost to the integrity of the two bullets and the integrity of our game? And the one on the right of the screen is the, ah, uh, look at that the soft point and the one on the left is the ballistic tip. Yes. Now why is then the ballistic tip so popular in the UK? Mainly because the people are meat hunting and if you're meat hunting you're often taking neck shots. You want the bullet to disintegrate as soon as it touches anything so that even if you haven't hit the neck bone itself 
you will still destroy the windpipes and the blood vessels. So if you're taking head and neck shots, you want a very frangible bullet. I mean, if that were to go into the rib cage of a red deer, um, it's not going to reach the heart, is it? No. And where the problem comes is if you hit the shoulder, it may not even reach the lungs. So you're saying that the soft point is better for heart shots and the ballistic tip is better for neck shots? Yes. You know, if you're taking head and neck shots, you're collecting, you're just hunting for meat, the ballistic tip is the right choice. Okay. If you're a trophy hunter and you actually want the head and the cape, then you want a soft point. You want the bullet to go through, you want it to destroy the heart and the lungs. And this one, uh, the ballistic tip, if you slip it behind the shoulder into the lungs, it'll often destroy the cape. It'll destroy the skin. So it's not a great choice for the trophy hunter. So um, you're going to cut this open? Yes. Well, one, we don't have to do much cutting open. It, <laughs> the expansion has actually torn the gel apart. And you're going to dig that round out. The bullet is essentially intact. It's quite a lot smaller than it used to be. Oh yes, it's totally expanded, but the weight loss is almost nil. So what if you weighed that against uh, the original? The original, it's pretty much 100% weight retention. Right. Those who witter about lead loss, nil. Doesn't happen. Doesn't okay. happen. Oh. You can see that the jacket is still in there. It's just everything is folded back. Yeah. That's absolute perfect performance. What we would, it's the trademark signature of the RX. This one, there's actually nothing really to find. Oh, what? It's all disintegrated. It has totally disintegrated. Which is what you want. Yes. So that does a great deal of damage, but quite near the surface of the animal. Yes. Um, you know, maximum penetration there is really four inches. Okay, so for fox is two, two, three. I mean, this is perfect. You don't want to go further than four inches. Well, fox, depends whether you actually want the skin or not. And if you're just vermin control, this is perfect. Right. And as I say, if you're shooting roe or monk jack uh, for meat, yes. And you're taking head and neck shots again. Okay. You're going to chop the neck off and throw yeah. that away, and the, okay. the actual meat is fine. You can't shoot roe with a two, two, three in the UK. Okay. But, but uh, uh, in 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 England, certainly. Okay. Um, that explains that absolutely perfectly. Should we try with a bigger? Let's try with something a little more significant. <laughs> Good. The fox shooting bullets did their stuff. Now it's time for a deer round. The 308 with a Norma plastic tipped bullet and a Norma Oryx soft point bullet. The plastic tipped bullet blows the gel off its bench and so does the soft point bullet. This calibre really does pack a punch. The ballistic tip it reached, it's only gone in eight that, inches. That much, yep. And there's an empty jacket, bits of it have penetrated a bit further. Yes. But I the jacket actually only went in eight inches. I can see, I can see the bits of the green just... Uh, yeah, strewn just along, the, yeah, exactly. uh, along the bullet path. But it's done a lot of damage at this end. Yes. So again, this is sort of within that much of the deer, which is, you know, good enough for a heart shot on a, on a red deer. And it, it is, but it's marginal. But it's probably um, better for a neck shot. It is. Um, it's marginal if you've got to take an angle shot through the, the stomach and, yeah, a poor angle shot. Again, it's not a trophy hunter's bullet. There's the, the RX. It's gone in, uh, what's that, six, 12, just over 12 inches. So that's about... Uh, a three quarters, two thirds of the way through a red deer, really, yes. at, at the heart area. Yes. Okay. And that's absolutely perfect. Again, 100% weight retention. Quite big. For, yes, quite big, but massive amounts of uh, initial trauma. Yes. Nearly as much, actually, as the ballistic tip. Okay. Yeah. Um, very, very effective bullet. Right. Okay. Which would, and which would you choose for red deer when you when you go stalking for fun yourself? Uh, I would choose the oryx. Um, I want to choose the deer that I want, and I don't want to be limited to neck and head shots. And if I see a nice trophy that I want to collect, I want to be able to collect it. Um, I'm not hunting purely to sell the meat. Um, if I was, well, then the ballistic tip would be a better choice. And then obviously you're limited on the shots that you take, but that's the price you pay for perfectly delivered meat to the restaurant. Back to the Norma factory where the bullets keep on coming. So how many do you think they produce in about six months? Snitch Dag, that's the average number of cartridges they've produced each day. Besser Dag, that's their best day. And Totty that's the total number this year. That's 14.6 million. 
Scores on the doors, Norma. Didn't they do well? Now I am heading down into the depths of the company to see what secrets they have hidden in rooms off these dark corridors. Ooh. It's a remarkable collection of firearms. Where's the trigger? Yes. That one? Yes. Aha! <laughs> so this is like a, a gun nuts sweet shot. I just want to try everything. What, what's, what's, what's this one, for example? Yes, uh, we think Buffalo Bill has we rifle. This is Buffalo Bill's rifle, yes. yeah? Yeah, they yes. think, we think so. It's yes. um, the story. It's a story set. So. And this is a revolver. Can I? Yes. Can I? Can I? Can I yes. Okay. It's a roll. Fantastic. It's a right yes. if I go bang. <laughs> Not bad. So I've got my uh, my bison over there. I think I've got him. This one over here looks fascinating. What what sort of animal do you shoot with this? It's a uh, Norwegian uh, uh, German rifle. Norwegian uh, German. German rifle. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's from uh, 1840. Four. So it was, what was this for shooting Germans with? <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit unkind. <laughs> um, what, was it, what do you shoot with it? I s war. Uh, whale. Yeah. This is a whale gun? Yes. <laughs> Extraordinary. <Yeah. laughs> do you use it much now? Uh, every Sunday. Oh, every yeah. Sunday. Yeah. Fantastic. We'll call it whale shoot. But some tell me that they shout in the sky. Uh, in a dock. Dock. And the row. Yeah, the dog. The dog? Yes, and row the uh, ship uh, uh, right in the harm. Uh, uh, <laughs> you're rowing into the harbor. Yes. And you use that gun. Yes. And then to do the whale hunting and with the rowing boat. Yes. Small whales? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. yes. Like yeah. Mickey, not hunts. No, no, no. no. Boat. no. Like, okay. yeah, you almost <laughs> see that on the. <laughs> okay, that's brilliant. Right, next one. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah. There's one in here I really want you to show me. It's it's that one. Can, yes. I, can, can I get it down? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, wow. This is the one from all the British war films. Yes. <laughs> I, am I pointing in the right direction or is it safer to point it down here? <laughs> so if I pull the trigger, it'll do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this is Broadsword calling Danny Boy. <laughs> how, how old is this? Is this Second World War? Second, yes. Can you, show, can you show me how to cock it? Can you show me how to no, make it? Can no, I don't. It's <laughs> back like that. Yes. No. Strong. Wow. But I think the Swedish is is better one. Oh, you think the Swedish <laughs> is the best one, do you? Are you a neutral in the war? We we, we actually fought it, okay? <laughs> it's uh, about the same. Yes. Yes. Ah, oh, it's much less. This is much noisier. Much more British. <laughs> Take that, Johnny yes. Osh. <laughs> He's a lucky boy. Norma ammunition is the most carefully tested in the world. So what's, uh, what's this room? In this room we are testing the pressure and the velocity. For competition ammunition they test one in every 5,000 rounds and for hunting ammunition one in every 15,000. If there's any doubt about a batch, Norma staff go into much more rigorous testing. We're in the very noisy room here, so if you give me these to put in my ears. Why is this a noisy room? What's going on here? Uh, here are we testing the precision of the bullets. Uh -huh. is, that, is that over here? It's, is, this, uh, is this your lovely assistant? Yes, that's uh, Birgitta, and uh, she's uh, shooting a three-weight plastic point. Uh -huh. That's ballistic tip. Should we ask yeah. her to do that now? Yeah, Come can on do. Let's yeah. give it a go. Yes. It looks like a lot like one shot got fired there. Yeah, it looks uh, like that, but uh, it, it's five. Five shots? Yeah. But uh, you can uh, check it, we can uh, take a little bigger size on it. So uh, what size group is that? We can go back and we take another step and you can read it here. It's 14.8 millimeters. That's about an inch then? Yeah, and that's uh, five shots, 100 meters. Right, one inch and a hundred meters, and, it, and is that acceptable? No, it's quite normal, okay. and I can uh, check every 
single shot. Oh, look at that. I can see on the vel velocity yeah. uh, in front of the barrel and uh, here out with uh, out at 100 meters. So I think it's uh, it, it's okay. Quite happy with that batch. Good. I think you hit the moose. <laughs> <laughs> The barrels and actions come from all major manufacturers, Blaser, Browning, Seiko, Tika, Sauer and the rest. Now in the Hall of Fame is Norma's entire range of sporting cartridges. Some see brass, others see rabbits, foxes or beaver, the small deer, the big deer, wild boar, the antelope, the great antelope, the big five, until this one, the 505 Magnum Gibbs. Shall we give it a go? The fun continues. Now Norma is very proud of this round. It's a 505 Gibbs, the ultimate professional hunter's round. And I'm going to use it to attempt to shoot at 30 yards. A skittle. <laughs> Missed. Finally got one. Far's a bit low. Maybe it's me. Well, this is really going to revolutionise pub evenings back home in Somerset. We've had a good poke around the factory. Now it's time to speak to the man in charge of Norma, Torbjorn Linskog. We start by asking him why he wanted the job. Well, I didn't know a whole lot about the company and I didn't know uh, much about uh, hunting or shooting either. Uh, you know, I'd done my military service as everybody else. Um, but I thought that um, this uh, product should be one which is, uh, you know, very, very interesting to work with. I had a background from uh, horseshoe nails. And uh, I concluded that ammunition, hunting ammunition, must be like horseshoe nails. Horsemen and hunters are people that are very similar in their stance. Uh, like um, they are dreaming uh, about uh, their horses and uh, and their hunts and um, for them nothing else is as important as their interest in these things. The hunting, um, it's nice to be there with your nice rifle and your excellent scope and you sit there in the gorgeous morning in the forest and you wait for something to happen. I thought maybe this is what I want to do in the future. Norma is a well-established brand. How does Torb think it's regarded on the global stage? I think uh, Norma is one of the strongest uh, brands uh, in Sweden. Actually, it took me a few years to understand, but it really is. This is one uh, super brand name. Uh, our reputation all over the world is absolutely fantastic. So. Uh, we're benefiting from that and of course this is something that we try to reinforce uh, by our actions and by our advertisements by everything that we do because if there is anything which will carry us into the future is a good image. So we leave Sweden and the Norma factory. We've had incredible access to this facility where your cartridge is manufactured to such a high standard that you rely on it to deliver when it matters.